Embedded Scientist Program, which is funded by Georgia Tech's Strategic Plan Advisory Group, uh, strengthens connections between the humanities and STEM disciplines for undergraduate students. During fall 2017 and spring 2018, respectively, uh, Dr. Kendall Lynch, who's back there, Dr. George Zalrescu, uh, were both embedded within first year composition and upper level technical communication courses, which were taught by Tina Colvin, uh, Katie Homar here, myself, Rebecca Fitzsimmons, and Rebecca Green, all of whom are Mary and Britton postdoctoral fellows in the writing and communication program. Everyone involved in this program shared a number of goals, including but not limited to increasing students' knowledge of science communication, particularly for non-specialist audiences, exploring points of contact between the sciences and humanistic issues, connecting concepts from historical and cultural texts to contemporary scientific research, providing a holistic value to the class through the combined expertise of the co-teachers, and improving students' transfer of skills such as communication, writing, multimodality, and collaboration to the STEM disciplines. The individual courses in this program varied in their approaches to these outcomes, drawing on the research areas of the postdoctoral instructors in communication. So some of the English 1102 courses involved techno critters, uh, which considered how animals and our relationships with them affect the design and purposes of technology. The history and rhetoric of science writing for children, which addresses scientific principles and children's literature from 1800s to the present. Uh, the Singularity, which examined science fiction and science fact about accelerating changes involving artificial intelligence, nanotechnology, and biotechnology. And Evolutions, which studied the changing face of humanity, uh, our responsibilities as creators, and the development of other forms of life, some of them hybrid, some of them alien, and most of them monstrous or weird, as pictured here. <laughs> so in what remains of our presentation, members of our team will reflect on their experience in the project, addressing the benefits of this pedagogical model for students as well as for postdoctoral teachers and researchers. We'll begin with Dr. Katie Homar, who will talk about her English 1102 course from fall 2017. Hello, my section of English 1102 was called Remixing Gothic Contradictions, and it focused on representations of science in classic 19th century novels. As a, tale, a fictional tale about the creation of life in the lab, Mary Shelley's 1818 Frankenstein, of course, played a major role in this class. Getting an astrobiologist perspective enriched our discussions of a novel that straddles Gothic and science fiction genres. Frankenstein not only has a long afterlife in monster movie adaptations, but it's also evoked in discussions about scientific developments, from AI to medical ethics to genetic engineering. In a class that also focused a lot on gothic tropes in pop culture, Kenda highlighted this contemporary scientific angle through her conversations with students and in a presentation about synthetic biology. She not only explained the ways scientists have been able to engineer DNA, but also led students to debate the ethics of these technologies. Kenda's insights specifically contributed to the critical annotated essay project. Here's a little bit of background. Despite a plot that involves the creation of life, Arctic exploration, murder, and mayhem, Frankenstein is chock full of archaic scientific, philosophical, and literary illusions that vex contemporary readers. The goal of our project was for students to research these arcane references in just one passage of the novel and create hyperlinks to resources that explain those illusions. Students then wrote up their results as though creating a report for a book publisher. That is, they justified why they chose sources from scholarly articles to historic images of scientific apparatus to movie clips and evocations of Shelley's novel in contemporary media coverage of science. Working with an astrobiologist emphasized the contemporary relevance of Frankenstein as Kenda shared both her own research and that of colleagues working in the field of synthetic biology. Students explored how Frankenstein is used in contemporary representations of science and thought critically about how oversimplified understandings of this novel impact the public's understanding of science today. Our discussions also compared the ways more specialized commentators, like literary critics and medical ethicists, have also turned to Shelley's novel. Through combined expertise in the humanities and sciences, students went beyond surface understandings of Frankenstein. In turn, they created a project that encourages deeper ways of engaging with an iconic novel, its pop culture afterlives, and contemporary media coverage of science. And now I'm going to hand the mic over to Kenda to talk a bit about her, her experiences being an embedded scientist. I'm going to just keep it very short and sweet. It was really um, 
uh, a pleasure to, um, first and foremost, with, across the Embedded Science Program, to see um, kind of the, the, the modern reboot of what many of us back in, uh, of, 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 of a certain age, of, of our you know, uh, first year rhetoric course that in my time you had to just get through. And in, in this case, the Georgia Tech class truly is teaching these um, students how to communicate in a modern technological world and communicate across all different kind of formats, and in particular learning how to communicate science, at least in the sections that we were in. So with Katie's class, it was quite interesting and fun to be able to bring um, this, this gothic connection to modern science, especially through the use of um, you know, presenting synthetic biology and all of the advances that we've made, especially with the Craig Venter Institute. Institute. And it was really a, a joy to see how the students took that information and synthesized it into some of their um, actual um, final um, products throughout the class. So it was a great experience for me to, to see these students learning how to be science communicators and how to connect um, kind of more comic um, popular literature um, with the scientific context and being able to communicate them. Thanks, Kenda. So because one of my colleagues, Becky Green, couldn't be here, I'm going to talk about her class in her place. Uh, much, many of the classes I described are English 1102 first year composition classes, but her course is an upper level course for juniors and seniors, uh, LMC 3403 Technical Communication, which is organized in her case around central concepts of sustainability and community engagement. Technical communication offers students a chance to expand their knowledge of effective communication practices like rhetorical awareness, multimodal design process and research, but also they're converting complex ideas into jargon-free prose, which can easily be understood by lay audiences, which is a key goal there. Uh, throughout the semester, students prepared a wide variety of deliverables of model workplace genres like proposal memos, flyers, instructional manuals, oral presentations, and reports. The final project in her course is a team-based feasibility study. One of the teams is pictured here. Uh, we're closely examining the GT campus for the course client, which is the center uh, Serve, Learn, Sustain. And they wanted to explore ways that campus can become even more sustainable, uh, examining the three E's of uh, equity, economics, and the environment. Uh, having George in that class as an embedded scientist, Dr. Green says, uh, will help students to do three things. It'll help them to first think more about the importance of overall resource distribution as students explore sustainability using what they've learned about George's research fields. Secondly, students will learn more about peer-reviewed publication process and develop stronger research bibliographies for their proposals. And thirdly, they'll learn more about the important, uh, the important ethical and social responsibilities that scientists and technical communicators have when they report their work to diverse audiences. So at this stage, uh, Dr. Green says, having George in class has been crucial to the development of good technical communication, which is a process that involves the description of products and the steps involved in reaching that process. Uh, George has been very useful during a presentation project, advising students to be more rigorous in the research questions that they were asking. He's also been encouraging all of them to think more about the ways that individual scientific literacies can impact our reading practices, the ways that we view the world around us, and the things that we expect cities and campuses to have in the future. Uh, so George's unique perspective and his willingness to share his expertise as a scientist and communicator with students has proven very effective over the past few weeks. And on that note, I'm going to turn it over to George so he can talk about his experience for a couple of minutes. Jeez. I have two notes there. They're both the same. <laughs> they came out of my brain at night, <laughs> past midnight, you know. <laughs> so I would simply say that, you know, curiosity is an in inherent human trait that starts when you're born and continues for, you know, together with learning, continues for as long as you feel it, right? Mm -hmm. um, the students that we teach, um, are the ones that are learning, are coming here to learn how to build the future, their future and our future. Um, so my role as an embedded scientist, I see it, is, a, is, is to, to kind of provide them a model, um, a cooperative model, and um, to make sure that they can distinguish um, fiction from science, and also to to make them see how to how to combine the scientific approach to achieving knowledge with the uh, humanitarian art of communication, that kind of knowledge, in a way that um, they can communicate in better, more inspiring ways to the wider to the wider society, either through their products, either uh, uh, companies, whatever they they're going to create, um, to their science, if, if some of them are going to become scientists. Um, 
and and ways that better uh, that are better that are gonna help better shape our our future. Thanks, George. So uh, we hope that hearing from various members of our team, uh, the others who couldn't be here, their posters are on display, so please look at them. Uh, we hope we've provided you some insight into how we work to achieve our outcomes relating to pedagogy, interdisciplinary, and science communication. Uh, so far, students have responded really positively to our program, uh, as 83.3% of our fall 2017 students said that they felt the class significantly connected the humanities with the sciences. And our goal is to continue to build these connections between our disciplines through co-design courses and co-taught courses. And we welcome your comments and questions about other ways that we can bridge the humanities and sciences in the classroom. Uh, because as Dr. Lehman reminded us in his plenary, uh, cooperation is everywhere. Thank you very much, everybody.